What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and continue learning about 10 pros and cons about Canada. Part 2! If you haven't seen part 1, feel free to go check that out first, or stay here in part 2. That's perfectly fine as well. But in part one, I started learning about some of the best and worst things about living in Canada, which I really enjoyed hearing about not just some of the greatest compliments of what life is like in Canada, but also some criticisms as well. It made for a very, very interesting discussion. And, uh, I mean, these are things that you really only think about, usually, if you are Canadian. So this has been really interesting for me as an American to think about some of these things about Canada and kind of give my American perspective on it and I guess compare some of these Canadian things to America. So that's been quite fun for me. So I'm excited to continue and finish up this video with uh, five more pros and cons about Canada. So, with that all being said, let's take a look. Houses are big. This is oh. something else that I took for granted. In North America, houses are usually three floors. There's the ground floor. Wait, wait, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, he, uh, he said something interesting here. He's like, Canada, houses are big, which I didn't know, I have no, frame of reference for what house sizes are like in Canada? Are they big? B but then he said North America. So are we talking about Canada here or is this like all of North America? Because I gotta say, on average, I think houses are pretty like big in America too. Like, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what the rest of the world is like, but I think American houses are pretty standard, pretty typical of what you think of as a house, or... I, I, I just can't help but wonder now, are Canadian houses, like, actually a bit bigger on average? Is that what we're saying? Uh, the second floor and a basement which goes underground. They also mm. typically have a garage and a backyard. Is this true? Well, you know, this would really depend on where you live, right? And if there's a lot of space? Maybe that's why houses are big in Canada. Canada is big. <laughs> you you heard it here first. Canada is really big, lots of space, right? So, lots of room to make bigger houses. He said that Canadian houses have uh basements. Um there's a lot of American houses that have basements, but I've also lived in areas where it's very very rare to have a basement. Like, it, it's kind of strange, actually. So, are basements common in Canada? This is interesting. I've never thought about, like, houses in Canada. I always figured they were probably pretty similar to houses in America. Now, the con is houses are expensive. In Toronto, uh, an average house will cost $828,000. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? What? Where did he say? Did he say in, I think he said in Toronto. So, okay, I guess that makes more sense. Like, I've heard of houses in Hawaii, really, like, beautiful destination place to live in America. Hawaii, or, you know, like, LA or New York. I think houses can be like a million dollars, but I, this just still shocks me to see it. 800,000. How does anybody, like, afford that? How do you... I guess there's people out there who can, or I don't know, it's, it's kind of mind-boggling. But also on the topic of housing in Canada, I have heard that housing in general, no matter where you want to live in Canada, housing is really expensive, like especially in the last four years, um, which is very, very similar to what's happened here in America. Bit of a housing bubble, we say, that we're in, although... This bubble only seems to go up. <laughs> it, it never pops. Everyone's waiting for housing prices to crash and interest rates to go down, but it never seems to happen. So <laughs> we are just left with crazy expensive housing. 
In America, I think it's worse in Canada, from what I understand. More, which is pretty incredible. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think there's an entire generation of people, um, I don't know, like let's say 30 and under, maybe, maybe 40 and under, who are really, really struggling to get their first house, which used to be kind of taken for granted, certainly here in, in America, absolutely taken for granted that you'd, you know, you'd grow up, uh, get a job, maybe have a family, and get a house. That's not necessarily true anymore, and this is why! 828,000 Canadian dollars, my god. Now, of course, that depends on the city where you live, but typically yeah. houses are expensive in Canada. Whew. Which makes no sense, because we're the biggest country with a small population, and our houses are made of wood and we have a lot of trees. Huh. I've never heard of it, like, said like that. Does it not make sense? Um, I guess at the end of the day, it's all supply and demand, right? There's only a certain amount of houses, and there's a lot of people who need a home, but can't get it. Um, maybe Canada, like, needs to build more houses. They certainly need to build houses here in America. Um, but there's also, I think a big problem is a lot of people are not selling their homes right now that otherwise would, and they would free up the availability of those houses in the, into the marketplace if they were to sell. But no one's really selling their home right now because they don't want to go buy another home at a hugely, <laughs> at a huge mortgage, uh, huge monthly payment, high interest rate. No one wants to do that right now. So no one's buying, no one's selling. It's like everything is just frozen solid. It's crazy. And uh, yeah, this, I mean, as you can tell, this is something that we talk about here in America too. So universal healthcare. Oh. Healthcare outside of vision and dental is covered. Wow. <laughs> I'm shocked it took this far into the video to finally talk about this. I didn't even I didn't even realize this might be the most obvious for Americans. This is like I think the number one pro of living in Canada. Yeah, like universal healthcare. I know that Canadians pay for healthcare through their taxes, so it's not completely free, but what an incredible sounding system. Makes so much sense. I don't know why we don't do it. No one in America knows what our taxes are going towards. Um, I didn't know that Canadians had to, you have to take care of your dental and vision. So that's not universally covered, huh? Do you get that through your job or health insurance? Or do you have to buy health insurance for dental and vision? Um, a, lot of, a lot of that for Americans is covered through plans insurance plans through our employer. Um, I'll say that. Of course, it's not free. It comes from paying taxes. Mm. But the con to this is that the healthcare system is slow. You will uh. wait for hours in the emergency room to see someone unless you have like a heart condition or something like that. Wow, I've heard, I've heard this crit criticism before that uh, the healthcare system is slower in Canada. Possibly because there's a lot more people, a lot more Canadians that feel like you can go in and get help because it's free. You can go and get seen. So there's more people going. Uh, whereas in America, not as many of us actually go into the emergency room, for example, because uh, <laughs> it costs a lot of money and we're scared about how much money it's going to cost. Isn't that, isn't that sad? Isn't that sad that that's an actual consideration? Um, so we don't go seek medical help unless it's really, really necessary. I can remember many times where I have attempted to stay home and just, like, I don't know, bear the grunt of the illness or whatever. and Because I, I don't want to, like, go to the doctor and pay the the copay and then the you know the insurance premium and uh, all this stuff so when you when you do go to the emergency room in America i mean any time that i've had to go i've been seen in like 15 minutes it's it's wonderful we have um urgent care as well uh little facilities where you go to if you, it, it's not quite the emergency room but we call it urgent care 
Um, those are usually like you can get seen in five minutes uh, if you need something looked at. Um, I, I do appreciate that part of our healthcare is that it's quick, it's very good. Um, like the treatment is good, but the, the cost, oh man, the cost. So this is, I didn't mean to go on a, such a long healthcare rant, but it always gets me, I swear. Um, this is probably one of the most interesting differences between Canada and America, I think. And it can take three months and sometimes more to see a specialist. Canada has wow. a small population. Th I'm sorry, three months to see a specialist. Wow. I mean, that's just a massive difference. I don't know. Part of me enjoys our American system that we get seen very quickly. Because healthcare, it's kind of scary. It's kind of interesting. You're, you're willing to pay whatever you have to pay for your health, because you, you need it. It's not a choice. If your kidney is failing, you have to go get it looked at. You need help. So if you're going to have kidney, or that's not a good example, because in Canada, they would, they would arbitrage you. They would see you in order of how severe uh, your illness is. So if you had kidney failure, you'd probably be seen very quickly in Canada too. Yeah. Okay, maybe my argument doesn't quite work because in Canada they will see you if you need if it's life or death so that's good that's comforting <laughs> it's, it's, man, it's funny even thinking about these things sometimes all population okay okay and uh, <laughs> I missed pro number eight here it's Canada has a small population that is really cool um, here in America like <laughs> it's funny because sometimes I say our our 50 states feel like 50 different countries. Like, we are related and we are connected, and in a whole other sense, we're not. Like, I, I feel no relationship to, like, people, like the other 49 states, you know? Maybe the surrounding area a little bit, but America is so freaking huge and has so many people. It's just, it'd be kind of cool to live or I imagine, I, could, I don't know for sure, but it seems like it'd be cool to live in a country that's smaller and has a little smaller population, more community, um, maybe easier to like, I don't know, does it make it easier to like pass legislation or get things done in a, in a country that has a smaller population? Like there's less red tape? I don't know. I don't know. Um, those are the things I kind of think about, though. Unless you live downtown in the city, it's never crowded and there's a lot of space. Which is mm. why the government welcomes new immigrants each year. Mm. Now, the con to that, of course, is that it's expensive to get around. If you don't live downtown oh. in a major city like Toronto, you're definitely going to need a car. And it's more expensive oh. to fly within Canada than outside to somewhere like Florida in the US. Huh. Well, this sounds exactly, literally the same. Um... I think the public transportation is better in Canada, though, from what I've heard. In America, you need a car. You need a car. America is built for you having a car in mind. Um, I think if you live in, like, New York City, okay, fine. You can, like, walk. Gosh, people, some, people actually walk, imagine. <laughs> walk or take a bike or a taxi or an Uber or the subway or a bus or whatever people do that don't have cars. I don't, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> um, but it sounds actually like Canada and America are pretty similar in that regard. Um, what else do we have? This is the pro. It's easy to find things you need. Oh, that was, there was no con? Was there a con? Than outside to somewhere like Florida in the US. It's oh, the con was that it's expensive. The con is that it, it's expensive. That's right. I almost glossed right over that. Um, I think that's pretty similar. Like, you need a car. Um, I don't know if it's expensive to take a bus or... <laughs> I, don't, I don't do that. Um, traveling by plane. Cheaper in within the U.S. than going internationally, for sure. Yeah, I think pretty similar. It's easy to find things you need. If you want to go grocery shopping, you can go to Walmart. If you want a coffee, ah. you can go to Tim Hortons. And if you need a pharmacy, <laughs> you can go to Shoppers Drug Mart. <laughs> Shoppers Drug Mart? 
What is Shopper's Drug Mart? Shop, what is, is that like, is it a drugstore? Is it like CVS or Walgreens? Shop, it, it's just a, it's funny to me to have Drug Mart in the name. Because we don't, <laughs> I guess we, we have Walmart. We don't have Tim Hortons. Anyway, the point is, <laughs> sorry, Shopper's Drug Mart really threw me for a loop here. We, we don't have that. Um, <laughs> uh if if you're if you're living in United States or Canada, I think you have access to a lot of stuff. This is this is more for if you live in another country, I think, like somewhere, I don't know, some other country where you don't have as much access to these types of stores, but in Canada and America, like yeah, we got access to a lot it's they're really we are living very, like, in very privileged positions to be in Canada or America. We got Walmart um, in Canada. You got Tim Hortons, uh, which I've heard mixed reviews on, but overall positive. <laughs> Shoppers Drug Mart. Um, we have, like, uh, Walmart, uh, maybe a Meyer, maybe a Piggly Wiggly, <laughs> a CVS, or a Walgreens, or... There's a lot of different types of shopping places in America, actually. <laughs> and wherever you travel in Canada, you'll find these exact same stores. This is oh, I think that's a little different, because in America, like, you will find different grocery stores, chains, different grocery store chains all over the United States. There's not just one. Um, so maybe in, although you will find Walmart, you'll find Walmart everywhere, but other grocery stores change depending on the region you're in, in the United States. In Canada, sounds like it's a little more streamlined. Um, what are the Canadian grocery stores? I learned about this a while ago. Um, like Loblaws, like is Loblaws everywhere, uh, I imagine? This is also a big con because these are big corporations and very hard to compete with. Mm. I love the charm of mm. restaurants and stores in places like Europe where every store is a small pop and mom shop, huh. they're different, you see people inside drinking coffee or having tea, huh. and there's a charm to it. We don't really have that here. The yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of mom and pop shops in the United States either. That's a good point, but I think that's similar between Canada and America. Nature in Canada is absolutely gorgeous. Ah, wow, it took this long to get to this point as well. The nature in Canada is gorgeous. This is such a fantastic one. I'm so glad he said this because this is a something that most Americans have no idea about. No idea. I, I've seen quite a few beautiful examples of Canadian nature uh, in different YouTube videos, I had no idea. No idea. I always thought of Canada as like, well, cold, <laughs> like a cold, winter, barren wasteland. Really, I don't, I don't know why. Like, I I really don't know why. That's such a strange stereotype. Um, so imagine my surprise when it's like, no, Canada has like beaches. It has like forests and like prairies and mountains and beautiful like lakes and rivers and Canada is beautiful and filled with nature and very diverse nature. And um, I'm glad I know that now, uh, I gotta admit. Uh, it took me a while, but most Americans don't really know. It's kind of sad. Canada is home to places that you can describe as heaven on earth, hmm. like Banff and Lake Louise. Yeah, but yeah. you don't have to travel to Alberta to find beautiful nature. Canada has huh. endless trails. Alberta. I've heard a lot of good things about British Columbia as well. Is that true? Those mountains, lakes, and animals, which is something that I appreciate because I love going on long jogs in nature. Hmm. There's really no con to this. I hope this video. Gets <laughs> there's no. There's no con to this. True. Uh, the United States, it is an absolute crapshoot. Um, there's some nice parts of the U.S. There's some really, really boring parts. Uh, flat, boring. <laughs> some of the U.S. is kind of cool. and Or if you live on the coast. or Maybe that's kind of like how Canada is. I'm not really sure. Are there, are there cool parts of Canada and boring parts? Like, that's how it is here in America, for sure. But uh, anyway, this was fantastic. 
This was so cool. I loved hearing about just Canada from this, a Canadian's point of view. And not just good stuff, but bad stuff as well. Um, I think that's really worth talking about. And it's, it's a lot of things I've never heard about or discussed before, which I really enjoyed. And, and comparing Canada to America is really interesting for me. This video is by Nos Alive. I got to give it a like because I really did like this. That, that was really insightful and it, it brought up some really interesting discussion, actually. So anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on pros and cons of Canada or any of the good or bad things we talked about here in this video, your thoughts on that uh, as a Canadian. That'd be amazing to hear about. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Canada and Canadian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.